The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby, on the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building, Black Sam in the building. My God, welcome to the show. What's happening, man? How you feeling? Good, man. Calvin said you rap in lowercase. <laughs> Would you agree with that? I do, yeah. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Cause... Yo, I got to tell you, um, when I was preparing for this, so I, I, I just flew in back from Orlando at like 3 a.m. last night. My flight was delayed for four hours, right? And the point of me telling you this story is because at the airport, I was writing all my notes for the interview today, I, I, this, this, and that. And um, you were the first artist I was writing my notes for, preparing for, and I put on your EP. And I got to say, your EP significantly calmed me down. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, it be, and, it, and, I, and I ran it back a couple times while mm -hmm. I was doing all the other notes for all the other artists today. Do not tell them that. Because then they'll be like, oh, you didn't listen to my music, even though I did. But, um, but I, really, I really thoroughly enjoyed the projects that you've put out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was listening to in the airport last night. So I want to say congrats on the new EP. I appreciate that, that man. I'm, I'm glad to hear it was like a calming thing. That's like not the goal, but I think... I think that's what happens when people listen a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not even just like a common thing, but I just think it, it, it created a certain vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that's more in line with yeah. your And it did do that for me too, because I was just like, yo, I just want to chill out. I want to listen to some music. And then it just so happened when I listened to your project, I'm like, oh yeah, this is like the perfect music that I want to like be vibing out to. And it did help calm me down at the that's, same that's time. That's cool. Yeah. How you been? Been good. Been in New York for a few days. So it's been nice to be back. It's been a minute since I've been here. When's the last time you was here? I think uh, maybe August, August twenty, was it, was it this year? Last year, I think last, last year. year August. Okay. Or August, some sometime in the summer, I had a show at uh, what was that spot? Pianos, yeah. Oh, shout out Pianos! Yeah, I love Pianos. Yeah. So it was. It's cool to be back. Uh, it's, it's been a minute since I've been out here. You just back yeah. on a promo run type shit? Yeah. Um. I I have a show. Tomorrow. Oh, yo, show, yeah, show, yeah. At um, SOBs and just seeing the homies in the city. My brother's here too, so I was able to see all the people I needed to see. Fire. So. Where are you from originally? I'm from Florida. I'm from South Florida. You were in Florida? Yeah. I, was, I, just, yeah, mm -hmm. I was just flying back from Orlando yesterday. Yeah. I grew up like 30 minutes north of Miami. Oh, in word. The suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, now I'm in Chicago, but came there for school. So yeah. <laughs> Florida, to Chicago, Florida to Chicago. New York every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. New York is probably the place I, I travel to most out of all the places that I don't live, you know, just because I got a lot of people here and music stuff here too. So. Right. You look yeah. like you fit in in New York anyway. I, I'm trying to, man. I mean, people definitely have some looks for the slides, but... Yeah, yeah. you're kind of crazy for wearing those. It's 30 degrees It was today. cold. I had these. I was supposed to go. I went to my homie's function last night, mm -hmm. and I was in the studio right before. I thought I was going to be able to have time to go home, mm -hmm. change into real shoes, and come back. It was so cold last night. Like, my <laughs> feet were frozen, and I, just, I couldn't do nothing about it. So you just brought these out? Yeah, I just, I just had these, man. <laughs> no, I'm dead. But I love... Uh, I love your sound because it's like different than like a lot of other things I've heard out of Florida. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel yeah. like Florida has quickly become one of our, uh, like one of our, at least in our top five, like fan bases or artists who come out here. You know, we've yeah. had a lot of people from Jacksonville, a lot of people yeah. from Miami, um, Tall Tallahassee, Tallahassee, mm -hmm. real Boston Richie. Um, but your sound is super unique. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because like, you know, like Cal said, like Cal called it rapping in lowercase. So yeah. I think, um, who called... Maybe it was, I forgot where I took this from, but somebody called you in an article a chill lyricist. Yeah. Too. Was that always the goal when you started making music? No, when I when I started rapping, I was really into trap music. Like, I discovered Gucci and Migos and Thug in high school, and that was when I first wanted to rap. So all the stuff I was making pretty early on, like, it was lyrical, but once I started taking rap seriously, I was only rapping on trap beats. I was experimenting with autotune, all that kind of stuff. And after a while, I realized it wasn't really me. And I was thinking about the music that I really gravitated toward. And that was when I discovered Doom and I discovered uh, Alchemist. And I discovered, like, mm. a little bit later, like, West Side Gun and, and the Griselda guys. And it just made me realize that there was something different I should be doing with my sound, something, like, that's more close to me. And yeah. then I just kind of started talking on songs instead. That's fine. And, and it just kind of it worked. And I was able to really focus on the lyricism, which is what is my favorite part, the rapping. So... Right, like yeah. you got, you got, you got, bro. Your your records are so fire. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but this man right here, um, John, yeah, right? he's the mayor of Buffalo. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> John is no John. After this interview, connect with John because he's he's the reason why 
we've had like Benny the Butcher and everybody Damn. come up here. You know what I'm saying? You. He he's the he's the Buffalo plug. You know what I'm okay. saying? I wouldn't recommend going to Buffalo <laughs> if you cold here. Okay, if you're not prepared, I know we, we gotta take you a step in the right direction. First of all, we gotta get you some boots. I'm gonna get some shoes. Okay, yeah, we can't. I can't shoes. let you go to Buff wearing those. All right. First of all, I don't think Benny will let you go to Buff wearing those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But um, but I, I definitely, I you definitely could hear that in the music too. Like even mm -hmm. the beat you did today, you picked the Doom beat. Yeah. We were gonna try to do an Al, an Al beat, but we couldn't find the correct instrumental. Mm -hmm. Um, but for Doom, like how big uh, of an impact on your, I guess, life had the Doom have? Was Doom one of those type of artists for you? I feel like everybody has like an artist who, like they say, changed their life. But for Doom, it was like changing my perception of, of rap music as a whole, mm -hmm. like changing how I listen to it, changing how I make it, and just paying attention to how. He doesn't even necessarily have a narrative a lot of the times, but it's just kind of like a showcase of his technical skill. Yeah. And that's always interested me more than the storytelling. And I'm interested in storytelling as well, but I think there's a time and place for everything. And I think that the time and place is so often for storytelling that all the other different aspects of rap kind of fly under the radar. So I'm just really into just rapping about like regular everyday life stuff, but just yeah. trying to put like a lyrical not even a twist, but like the emphasis on lyricism of, you know, going to the store and like getting wings or something like that, you know? Like people don't rap about that. Like you could rap about going to Icebox, you could rap about going to all these different places, but like nobody's really rapping about like going to pick up food mm. or like sitting in a restaurant, like eating somewhere and the waiter's real cool, you know? Just like regular shit that I feel like has really interesting things that you can rap about if you can just say it in the right way. So. Mm challenge is always to just say stuff in ways that nobody's ever said it before so that's just what i'm trying to do and if you can do that you can write about anything and it's just going to sound new right i think of like um as you saying that like what plays in my head is like childish gambino videos mm -hmm. right like i think of um i think of well one like if you're sitting at a restaurant i think of like the video of like Don, i think it's from atlanta where donald Glo there's like a million donald glovers well no what video no that's a music video what music video was that was that for sweatshirt i'm blanking not 3005, but there's a Donald Glover. Sweatpants? Was that what it was called? Sweatpants? That was the mm -hmm. song, right? I think that was a video where he's in the in the diner and there's a million Donald Glovers, right? Yeah. That's what I think of when you say shit yeah. like that. Or like even um like finding cool ways to rap about like day-to-day -day life. Like even when he dropped like that that uh that two summer that that two pack that had two summer records mm -hmm. and he had the animated video of him just walking down the street. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think it's stuff like that. And I think that that's cool because I feel like we need more of that sometimes because I don't always want to listen to like trap music or, yeah, you know, yeah. glock glock boom. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I want to sometimes listen about someone, you know, going through the same day to day life that I'm going yeah. through. Like, more, you're, you're, what you're perceiving, what you're, what you're putting out there is a better way to say it is uh, you're presenting a more relatable type of uh, uh, day to day life sound, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. And I think like there's flexing and stuff involved as well. But of course, I think that can also be done in a way that's not like shitting on people for being broke because I was just broke. So right. that's not like something I think people should be ashamed of or anything. Mm -hmm. But um, but for Doom specifically, like just just rapping about, like rapping exactly how you want to rap and not letting outside forces shape the way you rap, I think is really important. And mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of artists who just kind of rap a certain way because everybody else does or because they're told like what's going to work and what's not going to work. And Doom was just rapping about Doritos, Cheetos, and Fritos and shit, you know? And, like, everybody's like, this dude is a weirdo, but he was just him. Yeah. And I just really fuck with that. So he that's what I'm trying to do with my stuff, too. Word. Yeah. Rest in peace, Doom, man. Rest in peace, Rest in peace to the legend. Um, what I was going to say is, uh, so you're just talking about how, like, you were just broke, right? Yeah. Not long ago? About a year and a half ago, two wow. years ago. Yeah. Wow. You've come a long way. Yeah, man. It's, I mean, I think I sort of needed to go through it to, like, understand how to work under pressure mm -hmm. and how to like get the most out of the type of music I'm making mm -hmm. and also just how to become profitable. Like it, I, I just, I, I value like, I value the process. I value like the way, I guess sort of the way I struggled. I don't want to like romanticize it cause it wasn't like, it wasn't fun like being broke. But I think had I not gone through that I probably would be rapping a different way. And I don't think I'd be as far along as I am if I just had all the resources I needed at the beginning. So I just had to learn a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. Pressure makes diamonds. Yep, and now you're with Empire. Yeah, I'm distributing through Empire. Congrats. So appreciate it, man. Um, so I just released my first project with them and a few singles that are on the project through them. So i um, just going to gear up for another good year with them. Who you been working yeah. with over there? Um, I, my point of contact has been Matt. 
Okay, Matt. Um, I don't think I know Matt. Yeah, he's real cool. He's the the head of streaming there. Okay, so word. He's just he's the one who got me got me on basically, and we talked for a minute on the phone, and he was just very real with me in a way that a lot of other those conversations have not been very real. You know, mm-hmm. people make promises that they can't keep and all kinds of stuff. And I don't think it's in bad faith. I think people just think they can do more than they can. And this is one of the first times that I had a conversation with somebody with that much power even who was like, I can't promise you this. I can't promise you this, but I can, you know, I can do these things. And I was like, I'm glad somebody just told me that straight up, you know, and right. not try to like kind of sneak me in there. So real cool. I've had a real good time with them so far. And I think this upcoming year is going to be cool too. Shout out Empire. Yeah. Um, you really also nice. know my friend Marco Plus. Yeah, we performed. Um, we performed together the two years ago. I think. Oh wow! Okay, a while ago. Yeah, that was the first time I met him. Um, that was at. Do you remember that show? What? That was the piano show. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a pianos. It was Amir. Yeah. Um, it was Marco Plus. It was my name isn't J Mac. Grip was there too. Ah. Uh, I'm not sure. Because there was a show that I talked about with Grip when Grip was here a couple weeks ago, and he did it with Marco before the pandemic here in New York. So that's why I'm trying to think if that might have been the one. It might have It might have been like maybe the same week or something. I don't know if Marco had other yeah, shows, yeah. but that was... It's not super often that I go to shows anyways, but like seeing like Mark, seeing the three of them perform, I think there might have been another group that was kind of like um, snuck in last minute yeah. type thing, but it was... They're just really good performers. And I've been like following Marco on, on Instagram ever since then. I just see all the music he's putting out. Like he he got it. Yeah. Like Amir too. Like I've been listening to all their stuff. J Mac as well. Like I got I did a feature for J Mac a little while ago that hasn't come out yet, but I'm excited for that one because I don't know, three of them cold. That's fire. Who else you been working with lately? Most recently I work with Valet. Um, I peeped that. Yep. Yeah, Dope. I got a I got a feature from him for my my most recent project, and that's been something I've been dreaming about for like for years. Like ever since he dropped with with uh, Good Music, mm-hmm. that little EP, yeah. I was just a huge fan, and I just really wanted to get on a track with him. Um, and finally made it happen this past month. I work with my homie Isaac Zale. He's from Vancouver, I believe, um, and. Not really too many people outside of that. I got the homies, but how did you and V get together for that track? I so I've known Isaac for for a little bit. His sister actually introduced me to him okay. um, through like Instagram, and we put a, put together a song. I think maybe about two two-ish years ago. Okay, it wasn't like super good on like on my end, so I didn't even keep it on Spotify. It was called AMG. Um, but we've been in touch. Like one of the coolest, like warmest, most genuine people I ever met. In the, in the industry, if I can even call it, like, in the industry, you know? Mm. But we just connected on this song. I sent him the open once I record it, and I was like, yo, you would go crazy on this. He sent it back, like, a couple of days later, and it was it was tough, so I just put on the project. What about Valet? How did y'all two? Valet, I just um, reached out to his manager, um, Andrew Barber, and that was that was just kind of it. It was that but, simple? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I just had, like, had the track, like, with the open. Like threw it over. I had actually my one of my managers sent it over, and he was like, "Yeah, this is fire." Like right. he, he would definitely jump on this, and that was that was it. I was gonna say I love the tr- the cover art for the project too, because it looks mm-hmm. like one of those anatomy cover. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like when you know, oh, this is like the brand, whatever. Yeah. W- what was like the the idea behind that? I have a homie named Seb who's designing all my merch right now, oh, and like he's the hat. just yeah, well. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the hat and the yeah, and shirts, all all kind of stuff. Um, and he's just, he just has that creative, that creative mind. And I asked him if he could help me design a cover, which is based on like a few weeks prior, I seen on Twitter, like this, this pig, like a picture of a pig that was covered in the wood. Okay. And I was like, this don't even look real. So I started reading about it. It's the, this pig that's like native to, to Hungary. And it's the only like pig that has wool on it, like left in existence. And okay. apparently it's like the Kobe beef of pork. And I was like, I've never heard anybody talk about this. And like, I feel like I'm pretty up on food. So I'm like, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm tripping. But I just did did some research on it and it seemed really cool. And it was just kind of like the intersection of, of food and fashion, mm-hmm. like high, like this super high quality pork, right? But also like the idea of making a mink coat out of the fur of this, of this pig. Like that's the shit I rap about. Like food, fashion, just like kind of high end type stuff, so. Reached out to Seb, asked him if he could make me like kind of a, a design for for the project, and he sent me back 
this pig? And I was like, yeah, that shit hard. And then That's I asked hard. if he could put the bar over the eyes, like a little splash of color with the red. And then was just trying to mimic like the, the type, the um, like the font type and the, the, the design of like a kind of like a fashion house, like a lookbook. Mm. It's real minimalist, I think, but also like the like the diagram you would see in like a butcher shop, of like the parts of the pig or the parts of the cow. And just all kind of came together. Work with a, a creative director, creative designer named Joe Diver who's from the UK, I believe. Mm. And I just sent him the pig and I asked him, like, I told him what I wanted for the project and he was like, yeah, I could, I could cook this up. So he just, he made the cover. And the rest yeah. is history. The rest is history. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That's I just tough. sent him all the stuff I wanted. He sent it back and yeah, they just went, they went crazy. Like I had some ideas, but they really polished them. So, you know, shout out to Seb and shout out, shout out to Joe also. That's fine. I love yeah. how it came out, man. Thank you, man. So yeah. what's next for you? A few singles. Okay. Trying to get some uh, some more features from some artists I really like. Um, and I want to do some more shows. So hopefully I'll start traveling around more for shows. Just use the you know the streaming data to figure out where I need to go next. L.A. is my is the city that where I have the most listeners. So I'm trying to get out to L.A. and at least do a few shows like here and there. Um, Seattle's in my top five, I think, which is kind of random to me. But... Just trying to get to all the cities where I got hella listeners, do some shows, get more music out every three weeks just to make sure I'm being consistent. Hopefully I can get on some more playlists and just keep moving, and then I'll get a project ready when it feels right again. Word. Yeah. Well, congrats on everything, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Um, before we get out, uh, let the people know where they can follow you out. Anything else you want to let your fans know, now is the time to do it. Sure. This camera right here. This sure. time. All right. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Um... That's really all I'm on. Black Sam, B L V C K S V M. And so I got a website up now, got all my merch, got uh, vinyls for the album, for the project that just dropped, blacksam.com. And that's, that's about it. Yeah. Word. And well, Spotify, all that stuff, Apple Music. Yeah. Word. Well, appreciate you again, my brother. Uh, make sure you go follow him. Go run up the new project out now. Uh, freestyle out now. Go show him some love. Go show him some support. Love is free. Support is free. But y'all already knew that. Till next time, Florida in the building. Black Sam in the building. We out. Bow. Love, bro.